What's up, G-Speed fans? We're going to do an unboxing of a typical G-Speed chassis package deal. This happens to be the Element uh, Portal Custom Build Package that you can get on the website. Uh, it's going to come with 467 millimeter square spacers, chassis spacers. It's going to come with the G-Speed chassis GMP panhard mount. White Delrin skid plate produced by TJRC products. It's got the uh, typical SCX10 three gear transmission bolt pattern. The skid plate also comes with four three millimeter by 16 millimeter long set screws to hold the lower rod ends. The TJH V3. 3D printed sliders. Either whatever you order, it carbon, comes in carbon fiber or G10 material, but this is the TGH V3 chassis. And every package that G Speed sends out, you're going to get the G Speed chassis sticker sheet. So, you get your chassis, you get your package, now what? So the first thing you're going to do, take the pairs apart, you got two sides, you got driver side with the oblong hole here, that's where the panhard mount goes, and the passenger side. So just make sure the side with the G on the front shock hoop is on driver side. What I like to do with new builders is just get these set screws in the skid plate. You don't necessarily have to put the links in right away, just so you can get a base chassis built so you can kind of see where you're starting from. We're just going to put the skid plate on, the rails, bolt the rails to it, bolt the sliders, get the square spacers, pan hard mount, and a dual servo mount or the GLD servo mount which I'll show you. We'll install that and then when it's time to do the links and shocks and everything else you can easily unscrew the skid plate mounting screws that hold the skid plate to the rails and slip your rod ends in holding them in with these set screws. So we'll go through this hopefully pretty quick So these holes in this white Delrin skid plate, they are threaded. So they'll go in pretty easy. I use a screw gun to get them ran down just so you still see a little space right in there. You don't want to bottom out with the drill. Um, I just get them in there with the drill all the way down and then I'll use a hand driver to do the rest. This Delrin is just plastic, so you don't want to bottom out or tighten anything really, really tight. So the last little bit, I'll just just run them so they're snug. And even when you put your rod in, end up putting your rod ends inside here, and you put the set screws back in, you don't need to tighten them really tight. You just go until the set screw bottoms out. So that's it for now. We'll. You can get back to those that, when you're ready to put suspension links in. The next thing I do is get the sliders ready because the sliders and the rails are held to the skid plate with the same screws, which are uh, 14 millimeter long screws. Hardware not included with this package or any of the G-Speed packages, uh, except for some of the small parts come with hardware. Um, I recommend getting the Team K and K hardware, it's called the Monster Bag, uh, comes with a bunch of 3 millimeter button head screws, uh, 3 millimeter nuts, 3 millimeter washers, and also get the K&K spacer kit. Those two things are a must, I'll put the link in the comments. So I'll get one of the 14 millimeter screws and it's going to go 
the center hole and then the back hole. This front one is for the upper front link. We'll get it in there, get it, get it started, get another screw tip on my drill. So, take the passenger side slider and the passenger side rail and start the screws in. And I do all this by hand. You don't need a screw gun to put all this in. You don't need to go fast and you don't need to tighten up stuff really, really tight. Like I said, this is just plastic. If you have these sliders on backwards, you're going to know. Because the bottom of the slider is designed to follow the exact contour of the TGH V3 rail. So if it were on backwards, you're definitely going to know. It's not going to follow it at all. So let me snug these, snug these screws out and get the other side going with the other. 14 millimeter screws. As you can see, I'm doing the mounting the rails, sliders to the skid plate first before you even think about putting chassis spacers in. Those are the four screws. You put in the 14 millimeter screws to hold the sliders and rails to the, to the skid plate. I usually get them close to tight and then I'll put the skid plate and the rails flat on the table and then I just put some pressure on the skid plate to the table and also the rail so they're both sitting parallel to each other on the top of the table and then hold them tight right there and then finish snugging the screws out. And that makes it so bottom of the slider, bottom of the rail and bottom of the skid is perfectly smooth right there and this thing will just slide over rocks. Do that same thing to the other side. Press it down on the table and snug it up. Again, not really, really tight, just, just snug. Okay, there you go. So skid plate, sliders installed. Next thing will be to put the 67 millimeter spacers. Now, these are only 67 millimeters. The skid plate is 78 millimeters. Don't worry, it's supposed to be like that. So I take a bunch of eight millimeter long button head screws, or you could use cap head. I'll put, I'll put them in just a couple threads. That's it, a couple threads, put this one in. couple threads just so it's floating there. Do that to either end. Let's start all the screws first. So I'll put a 67 millimeter spacer in the front and the very back and then most of my rigs, well if it's a cheater then it's going to have spacers front and back with no bumpers. 
Um, if it's class two with, with uh, metal bumpers, then you're not going to use spacers front and back. You're going to use your bumper as the, as the chassis spacer. Um, you can put these square spacers anywhere in the chassis, depending on your setup. You know, if they're getting in the way of links or a, a battery tray that you want to run, then you can slide them forward, slide them back. There's plenty of optional spacer holes along the side of the rails. Go the other, there you go. So I basically only put three spacers in this particular base build. Next thing would be to install, which I recommend buying with your chassis package, is sold separately on the website, will be either a Team Garage Hacks, TGH DSM dual servo mount, or the new G Speed Chassis GLD laydown servo mount. So this is the one we'll show mocked up in the chassis. So this dual servo mount and the GLD servo mount both screw into the rails the same place. So I'm going to hold this kind of like it's going to go in. So that's the direction it's going to go. The Team Garage Hacks dual servo mount, if you put this guy in, the TGH goes towards the transmission towards the back of the truck. So it's basically going to go in like that. So the chassis rail is going to have a hole right here, right at the base of the shock hoop. That's for the back screw, mounting screw that goes in the GLD and also the dual servo mount. And then the there on this side, on the driver's side, there's going to be two holes close together. That is always the driver's side and that is where the pan hard mount screws into. The opposite side of the GLD does not have two screws right, holes right next to each other, just the one that matches up to the mounting holes in the chassis rail. So first thing I'll do with this servo mount is start on the back holes. And again, just like the spacers, I'm just going to run the screw in a couple threads. I'll tell you why in a minute couple, two, three threads, it doesn't matter. Just get the screw started in there. And at a final build, if I was going to leave this together, and this is just an example for you, I Loctite everything, every screw that's metal to metal, I use blue Loctite. Right now it's just dry fitting to show you how it goes together. So there's the two mounting screws in the back of the servo mount. I'll put the passenger side front mounting screw for the servo mount in, just barely in, a couple threads. Now the GMP and the TFR pan hard mount for the Air 45 axles, sorry Air 44 axles, um, both screw into the same spot. So you have this oblong hole in the driver's side rail and then the hole right behind it. Those are the two holes that you're going to use. So this is the GMP. So the back hole on my finger here is going to go to the the hole in the rear hole and then the oblong hole is where the front hole lines up to. Grab another eight millimeter screw. Start it in there, get it started. Okay, so all the cross member and servo mount screws are just started and you can, you can see the 67 millimeter spacers are shorter than the skid plate. That's okay, it's supposed to be like that. So you can see the rails are already starting to pull in just by starting a couple threads. So that's what's supposed to happen is these, this chassis rails are designed to squeeze in to meet the narrower cross member uh, chassis spacers and the dual servo mount it creates a stiffer chassis, 
um, allows more room for uh, your shocks to articulate coming off of the axles and the side because everything's narrower here. And then you have the width of the skid plate to allow the room for different kind of transmissions that you decide to run. So next thing I'll do is the two mounting screws at the back of the servo mount and also these two screws in the spacer that's closer to the transmission are the ones I'll do first. And I just evenly tighten up each side looking at the space right in here, keeping it even. And it just gradually pulls the rails in to where they're bowing in and when I have a little bit of space here, even space both sides and it's almost tight, then I'll take and just squeeze the rails together with my hand here and you'll see that space is taken up and then go ahead and run these screws the rest of the way down and that will squeeze and bow the chassis in even. And after that, you can go to the front mounting screws of the servo mount. Tighten those guys up. Then the front spacer. These ones, it's okay not to do them. You could just do one side at a time because once you do these back mounting screws, the servo mount, that squeezes the chassis all the way in and it's basically pressing up against your front spacer and the front of the servo mount and those screws are just ready to tighten up. So there you go, there's the front of the chassis and the back you do the same thing. I start with the mounting screws that are close to the transmission just like I started on the two screws, mounting screws on the servo mount that are closest to the transmission. I'll tighten up both sides evenly. Okay, and as I'm doing it, I'll just squeeze the chassis rails together like that and tighten up both sides. I'm going to turn the spacer so it's straight. So there it is, chassis rails are pinched in, I'll finish the last two screws in the back of the chassis. There it is, properly put together base of a TGH V3 performance chassis right there. So. The package deal doesn't come with the GLD or the dual servo mount, but that can be purchased separately on the site. Um, the uh, package deal for Air 44 axles is basically the same thing. It just doesn't come with the spacers and it comes with a different panhard mount. It comes with the TFR panhard mount. Um, so the, the, the definitely recommend getting a, a servo mount with your package. And also if you are uh, mounting your body, Lexane body um, on here, you're going to need the G-Speed body post holders. So these body post holders here will hold the ten, uh, Axial 10-3 and Axial SCX 10-2 body posts and these guys come with six millimeter or three millimeter by six millimeter screws and they mount onto the shock hoops really any holes you want on the shock hoops that aren't being used for your shocks you can mount those on and then the body posts slip down on there so that's about it so you got any questions leave them in the comments I'll leave the uh, links to this package deal and obviously the website uh, I'll leave the link to the K&K hardware pack and the spacer pack in the comments uh, if you like what you see please hit the subscribe button and like and I'm going to be coming out with a lot more informational videos and some more on the trail how to driving and different things like that so thanks for watching guys